Hey, there we go. And I'm on an echo. Nice. Look at that. How'd I do that? Am I still echoing? I'm still echoing. What happened there? There it is. There's the echo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is February 15th, 2019. And we're going to write a little bit of code today. Hey there, Roosh and Coded Beard. Hello, hello. Quadraphonic Fritz. Yes, and the Stream Elements chat is not working again. Hello, hello. How's it going there, Crazy Spaniard? Thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to force a refresh of my Stream Elements, stream elements widgets here, see if we can get that to reload. There we go. Hello there, Digital Drummer Jay. Thanks so much for joining us. And Clark I.O. is here. Hello. Fairy Wings. Thanks so much for the host. Uh, Viral Cap, SZ Drag, Action Cop. And Suncar Cool. Thank you, everybody, for those follows. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get back into our Stream Elements project here today. Return to Dust. Hello, hello. Um, and then we're actually gonna run a little bit long today. We're gonna run right up against. I've got an afternoon of a, it's it's workshop like content. We're gonna have some great discussions. I've got. Four guests for you this afternoon. They're going to be over on the Dev Intersection channel. We're going to start something that we're calling Virtual Dev Intersection. I'm working together with some of the organizers for that event. And we're going to bring you some of the speakers, some of the folks that are responsible for some of the great content that you'll see this June in Orlando. And they'll be here to talk to you, show you what they're thinking about, some of the things they're building towards that event. Take your questions, and we'll be... Hosting over here on my channel, but you'll find us over on the Dev Intersection channel. Let me throw a quick shout out into the chat room for that. So you're going to want to check it out. Um, I'll be hosting along with Richard Campbell. We'll spend an hour up front talking about some of the great things going on with .NET, Visual Studio, and Microsoft. And then we've got Steve Smith, our Dallas, will be joining us for the second hour. Then Michelle LaRue Bustamante will join us for a little bit, and we're going to talk about Docker and architecture concepts and some of the things that, sh that she's running into in her consulting practice. And then our final speaker is, um, you, I'm going to mispronounce his name, is Cyprian uh, Jachichi. And Cyprian is doing some studying, doing some work in deep learning. I hope you join us. It's going to be a great afternoon. The video will be recorded and will be available through Dev Intersection later in the week, later next week. So there we go. A little bit of information about what's going on there. Let's get some music playing in the background here. And uh, I'm not going to play it with my Stream Deck because there's, a, there's some debugging we're going to do with the Stream Decks today. Um, so let me reach into my big old pile of music to code by here. And I think... Um, you know what? I haven't played this one in a while. This one is called Sienna. It's different. This is music to code by from our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. Um, this is music that's scientifically engineered. It's designed to get you in the flow, to get you in the groove of whatever task it is that you might have so that uh, you can be more productive. Check it out at mtcb.pwop.com. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us, and thank you, Carl, for letting us listen to your music live here on the channel. All right. All right. Hey, good morning, Robert Tables. Good to see you. Now... I'm wearing my Overwatch hat because last night was the start of the Overwatch League. I don't know if you watched this. The Overwatch League is live here on Twitch. You can find them on the Overwatch League channel. They're playing Overwatch and they're representing cities. 20 different cities this year from all over the world, particularly North America, Europe, and Asia. 
Um, to kick things off, my Philadelphia Fusion took on those always tough London Spitfire. And they won 3-1. to one. Philadelphia defeated London. So that was a real good time. We had... We were so happy to see Philadelphia win. And uh, our friend Gritty from the Philadelphia Flyers even made an appearance. So you don't watch Overwatch League, but Monte Cristo and Monte Cristo, Monte Cristo and Doa are two of your favorite casters. So yeah, they are really good at casting the events. All right, let me just set the level a little bit lower there on this song. There we go. So now, um, we've been doing some work on, there it is, the Stream Deck Toolkit. This is a series of tools that you can use to build a plugin for your Stream Deck. And we've been setting up all kinds of features in here, and we've got a bunch of issues that have been opened, things that we need to take a look at, things that we want to do to make the development experience easy, simple for anybody to get involved with. And we've been building out and adding features here that are that are really good. But I think we need to retreat a little bit back to some of the basics, some of the fundamentals, and make sure that it's all working properly. Hugo has a great discussion that he opened here around the directory structure for the projects. Now, when you look at how the Stream Deck functions, before I, I get into Hugo's discussion here, you have a plugin that's something like OBS Studio that you see here on the right, and you have these actions that live underneath of it. And when you click an action and you put it over here onto, onto the display, things like this GitHub button that just opens a website is what this does. You have properties here. Now there's obviously a collection of images that go along with it. You have the configuration of the properties and the various files that go along with running and managing the plugin. And when we build things with .NET, these are EXEs. We build an executable file that contains all the stuff that this hooks up to. But the property inspector, this content here, this is HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. The images we have living off in a separate folder, in a child folder, so that it's easy to access them and put the pieces together there. So what Hugo is suggesting is there's a little bit of an issue here where you're going to build out action classes in the root directory, but you're going to have your property inspectors that go along with that, the HTML specific to it, in a property inspector folder in the current, the current direction that we're going. So what Hugo is seeing is the larger the number of actions that we define in a plugin. So if we add 15 different actions into our plugin and each one is a separate class file, you're going to end up with a very cluttered root directory. I can see that, sure. You're going to have difficulty identifying which assets are related to which actions. Um, perhaps, because you'll have the images for an action living in an images folder that might or might not, might not have the same names. You might have difficulty identifying whether an action has a related property inspector or vice versa. That's an interesting point because you have property inspector files sitting in their own child folder. How do you know back and forth what those different things are? So a little bit of what's being suggested here is maybe it makes sense to put actions in their own folders with their property inspectors and images next to them so that you have everything for an action in one folder. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, good morning, Welsh Ronaldo. Uh, yeah, Robert Tables, you see what, it, what, what we're getting at here is do we take things from, and let me show, um, let me show one folder structure here that I've been working on. Um, we started building that GitHub action. Where is it? Oh, wrong folder. My bad. Hang on. And then I'll drag this over. So here's my GitHub action. I've got a source folder that has a .NET solution and then a project folder. 
And then I have my action, which is right now, it's a plugin, but it needs to turn into an action. We have these action classes is the new model we're moving forward with. So I have an action here that has a property inspector that goes with it and then images that go with that. And the images are by default right now, they're the counter images. We need to replace that still. So these things, instead of living next to each other off the route, a possible proposed solution here is, well, let's create a folder here and call it GitHub. And then if we take this, this, and this, and now everything for the GitHub action is in here. We do need to have an images folder up here at the root for the high level images that are responsible for presenting the plugin. So what do you think of that? Um, this is for discussion, right? This, and, and that's particularly why I wanted to bring it up here on the on the stream so that we could talk about this and get some feedback from you in the chat room. Other consideration which dawned on me is the deployment structure most likely will need to be managed. Explain. Uh, code stock only eight weeks from today. Yeah, binary chef. I'll be at code stock in Knoxville, Tennessee that uh, that f second week in April, April 12 and 13. I actually arrive on the 11th and there's a speaker dinner the night before at the World's Fairgrounds. Yeah, oh yeah, at the, uh, the the Golden Globe. Golden Globe on a stick, I forget what it's called. The Sun Sphere, that's it. I'm not getting alerts and and it, it seems that, uh, oh my gosh, Stream Elements took a powder on me here. Let me refresh, force the refresh. I saw some subs come through. I thought I saw subs come through. No, I didn't. Okay. I thought I saw new subs. Thank you to the new followers. There's Fierce Kittens. Oh no. Hang on. We created a we created a voiceover yesterday. I, I'm gonna have to play it. Because that's what I do. Um uh, No, that's not it. Got to make sure I open this in a new player. Paging Fierce Kittens. Paging Fierce Kittens. Fierce Kittens to the Fairy Wing Stream. Yeah. We had fun with that. So, um, yeah, there's the eyes. <laughs> hey, Lycan. So these are the two proposed ways that, that Hugo is suggesting we need to address this. Now, I think... Um, there's definitely something to having some convention over configuration when we talk about the structure of a project. Do we have a convention that says each action lives in its own folder? Or do we have a top-level folder of property inspector and images? Right, let me just grab all of these things. Right, do we have these all live up here at the top level? And we have a property inspector folder that has, maybe it's not property inspector HTML, but maybe the name of the property inspector file, right? The, that web page that corresponds to the action at the top level to present this, maybe by default, it's the same name as what's being presented here. And the JavaScript at the top level that corresponds to it is the same name. So maybe I have github.html and the JavaScript that goes with it is github.javascript. Well, that becomes a little bit easier to track and see how things are going. Binary Chef says, is chat working? I'm only seeing what I am typing. Yes, yes it is. And Lee, how are we doing? Uh, we're doing great. How are you doing? Thanks so much. It's great to be here and we're doing it live um so i want to keep talking about how we're structuring the project here and then um we're going to move the discussion over to the discord chat room so over on discord there's a stream deck tools channel let's make sure that we um 
we we continue the discussion over the the chat. There's great um, great interaction over there. Folks are always eager to chime in and and talk about what's going on. Let's continue the discussion over there. I want to continue being productive with this, but I want to make sure that everybody's everybody is aware that we're thinking about changing the default structure of this. The chat replay in the stream I am seeing in the app not so much restarting Twitch glitch. Okay. All right, I see it just fine here on mine. I actually have chatty over here and I've got and I've got my console up and I can see what's going on. So this is something that, that we may want to revisit. We may want to set up some standards around some of these things to make it easier to track and connect the dots as we build plugins. Now, if I look at my pull requests, we have another pull request that we received from the Coding Bandit from Carrie Payette. She's updated our template files to support the 4.1 beta 2 of the Stream Deck application. So because we've been interacting with our friends at Elgato, we've been working with them on some of these features, everybody right now has access in the public, has access to software version 4.0.2 of the Stream Deck. They've allowed us to get access to a, a semi-private beta of 4.1, the next version. It's got a couple fixes for the APIs that we can take a look at and we've been working through. And Carrie's been working on making sure that our APIs continue to work with the new features that are coming. And we've created this B41 branch here. Beta 2 was released a little bit earlier this week and, and she's brilliantly gone through and put together a bunch of fixes to make sure that we stay in line, in, in lockstep with those new features that are coming in the 4.1 release of the Stream Deck. So she has a couple things here that are going to need to be addressed and when we merge up into the rest of our project. And look at that, the diff settings, I really wish. GitHub, if you're out there and you're listening, I'd love for that hide white space changes to, to be remembered when I come back in here. Working now. Oh, that's great to hear, Binary Chef. Uh, no, there, there weren't any further questions about the discussion, but I want to make sure that we continue it over on the, uh, the Discord channel. So you can find information about Discord. If you're not familiar with it, there's a link down below me here on the wall. So there's the plug-in action that we need to merge in so that that works. And there's a new series of APIs that are being exposed to us that will allow us to properly send that payload information back and forth from the property inspectors. So Carrie's got some updates there for us. And it looks like she's doing a little bit of the merging right now from that plug-in action change that we saw yesterday from um, that we saw yesterday from uh, uh, Auth0 Bobby. So these look pretty good. Um, I have no problems accepting this. Carrie's done a great job with some other modifications that she sent up. So I'm going to confirm that squash and merge and get that into our B41 branch. So that's just a beta branch that we're tracking along with that next release of the Stream Deck so we can make sure that it works properly. Now, I'm gonna make sure I open and look at the list of commits here because there's a there's a very interesting thing that you, you might not know about where if you don't go to Azure DevOps every 24, 48 hours, if you don't actually log in, It'll stop building. That makes it interesting. So you need to actually stop by and take a look. So, Wavehack, hello. Would you recommend to a developer who grew up in a Linux environment ecosystem who wants to start working more on or with Windows, C Sharp, possibly Azure.NET Core? Any tips? Um, you're not most comfortable on Windows, but you've worked with PHP, JavaScript, Linux, CLI, Bash, C most of my life so far. Um, okay, so Wavehack, everything that we're working on here with .NET does, and .NET Core does work in Linux now. You can use Visual Studio Code. You can use the .NET command line, all in Linux, if that's where you want to go and start using C Sharp, Visual Basic. You can work with those, those tools over there in your Linux environment. 
And Azure has terrific support for running Linux out in the cloud, uh, interacting with all of their tools and services if you want to use JavaScript, PHP. Like Fierce Kitten says, WinForms doesn't work on Linux. It's Windows Forms. Why would it work on Linux? So, um, make sure, but check that out. There's there's a lot of great features for uh, for .NET Core and Visual Studio if you want to use those over there on Linux. <laughs> um, Win WinForms is still pretty popular, despite what what the fierce one says there in chat. <laughs> you really like C Sharp and .NET Core? Want to learn more related stuff? MSDN is a great resource, but it's hard to get started. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, Wavehack. Um, check out, there's, there's a couple tutorials that'll get you started if you navigate to just dot, dot .net. And it'll take you to .net.microsoft.com. There's um, a get started link here, along with things to help get you past that initial getting started thing. There's even an in-browser tutorial. You can get into machinelearning.net if you're interested in that. The download, this will skin automatically for you over to Linux so that you can download your SDKs and your runtimes. And you can install with your favorite package managers. Um, <laughs> whether it's Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, apt-get on Ubuntu, right? Debian, uh, CentOS Oracle, OpenSUSE, take your pick. There's versions available that you can download, make it real easy to get up and running on some of those popular distributions. And it's also in Docker. Good point there, Robert Tables. Download, download the Docker images and you can get started real quick. So check that out. You can even, yes, Binary Chef makes a great point. You can even use SQL Server for Linux inside of a Docker container. Spin it up. Mess it up, put whatever you want in there, break it, knock it down, and start up another one. So, Dockerize it for Robert Tables. Robert Tables needs a, a sound effect, right? Something, I, do we put an echo on? Do we do something else cool, right? We could put an echo on that. We could make it, right, if we did an echo, it would be something like, Dockerize it with Robert Tables. Or maybe we went the other way and we did something with, uh, right, if we auto-tuned it. Dockerize it with rubber table. No, maybe. There's a thing. Can you say what future awaits WPF? Uh, WPF is coming to .NET Core 3. Um, it's available in a preview right now. Anybody can download and check it out. And there's lots more coming to this. Tons of things happening. Folks are building applications now um, that work with WPF in .NET Core 3. There's huge performance improvements in there because .NET Core drop, drop, yeah, drops all of that baggage that's in .NET Framework. So they've even got, check this out, they have a version of paint.net working in the lab on .NET Core 3. Let that sit in for a second. Wow. Yeah, right? That's pretty cool. And then? How do you get your hands on this, Jeff? Um, so they had some feedback surveys. There is, an, uh, there we go. It's on GitHub. It's on GitHub. .NET slash WPF. Lots more coming as .NET Core 3 evolves. There's getting started instructions here. Let me copy this URL. I'm gonna put it into the chat room for you. Um, it is still WPF. It is a Windows platform. Um, that being said, it's all open source. It's all right here. And .NET Core runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll let you make the next steps and connections if you'd like. So, w and, and look at that. Fierce Kittens with the WPF. <gasps> yeah, right? Open, Wavehack, I love open source too. And, and 
that's really one of the drivers for what I like to do here on stream is it's one thing to, to sit out here and say, hey, I'm, let's build something and I'm going to write some code. Me. Yeah. But to build something and have it be open source so that you can download it, check it out, break it. I love saying break it. Um, modify it. Figure out, you know, hey, here's a cool feature. What do you think? And contribute back to it. That's really something. Um, where did my GitHub records go there? They're not loading. There we go. And when folks contribute, I'm going to put your name up on the ticker there at the top of the screen. Because it's important to me to recognize you, to thank you for contributing if you decide to take some time and work with us here. Yes, the W in, in WPF stands for Windows. WPF on Linux, might it would take some work. It's not something that, that the team is investing in, but it's all open source. Um, does anybody know for sure? I don't know. What happens to UWP if and when WPF goes cross-platform? That's a question for our friends on the Windows team. So, Avalonia, there's that option as well, Gumshoe. Very good point. So, Avalonia is another framework that runs cross-platform. Kittens, you're serving up Girl Scout cookies. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Is, is your daughter still selling Girl Scout cookies? She's got to be close to 500 boxes at this point. 500 boxes sold over Twitch. It's insane. Um, so that's the information about WPF 417. She's done or she's at four, She's at four, 417 boxes. Is a lot of boxes of cookies. Roosh says WPF is worth investing time if keep in mind Electron and all the web apps. Um, here's the, so the problem with Electron, while it's cross-platform, um, it's JavaScript, it runs on top of a browser, which means that you need to update your Electron apps when the browser updates. Um, otherwise, you're open to those same security things in your application that Chromium patched. So there's a little bit of a maintenance challenge there that you need to overcome. Works great. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic. If you're a JavaScript developer, TypeScript developer, you want to build on top of the Electron framework, and that's the Electron framework is, is effectively the Chromium browser with some hooks to make an application. And that's how Visual Studio Code is actually structured. Well, if you're going to build your own apps there, you need to make sure you're up to speed and tracking what that Chromium project and the Electron project are updating. It's, a, it's another dependency that you're taking. Okay, that's fine. If you want to do some interactions at the operating system level because you need to access devices, you need to interact with a scanner. That's not easy to do. So take a look. <laughs> Wayfac, Electron eats all your memory. Why would it ever do that? <laughs> the only Electron app that's actually fast and half decent is Visual Studio Code. Um, and Visual Studio Code doesn't just have a small team of folks out there tuning it and preparing it. There is a large team that, that builds that, and they are really good at their jobs. They're some of the smartest folks that I've ever met. Um, Slack, you'll find that's an Electron app, and that, that does chew up a lot of memory. VS Code is insanely fast for what I ask it to do. Yeah, it is. We've sent humans to the moon with less power than Slack requires. Amen, Robert Tables. Oh, no problem, Bruce. So if you're hungry for some Girl Scout cookies, make sure you, you get in touch with Fierce Kittens there and her daughter. They're selling the Girl Scout cookies. And everybody loves a Girl Scout cookie unless you're celiac and you can't eat gluten. Actually, I think they have a gluten-free cookie, don't they? Mr. Demon Wolf. Oh, thank you for those kind words. Yes, I um, I got my partnership about a week and a half ago. So, very, very cool. 55 to 60 extensions in Visual Studio Code. Binary Chef. That's a lot. 
Visual Studio Code is open source at well as well because they can rebuild it. They can make it stronger. It's the six million dollar text editor. Nah, it's more than that, but you know what I mean. It's boss. It is. It's pretty cool. Uh, it, it, all right, let me make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Is it Parisian or is it Parixan? Let me know. But you're eating. You're eating Girl Scout cookies now, huh? All right. You like the new, shiny new sound effect? That's right. We can rebuild it. Let me. Right. So left. There's the six million dollar man sound effect. I think it was a little loud. I don't want it that loud. Totes, my goats. I can't believe it was that loud. All right, we were doing some debugging the other day around the Stream Deck applications, and I've got I've got my my applications running here, and I had a problem where we were logging data, and for some reason it wasn't logging to the files, and I wanted to take a look at that real quick, and then go back to to looking at some of the issues that we've seen and that we have out here do a little bit of debugging maybe we're going to write a unit test or two to exercise some of these things i'm a big fan of unit tests as a way to um provide that that bit of um security policy insurance policy that the things that i'm writing don't break my existing users. And I, I even have a thing down here. I think there's a memory leak. And according to Carrie, um, this is actually something that's been addressed as part of the 4.1 release. So this might go away. Gareth is talking about F, F sharp support in our templates. That's really, really cool. We'll take a look at that. Uh, it's a take on a Hindi word that means experiment. Parikshan. Is that how you pronounce it? Do I, do I have that right? Parikshan? I'll, I'll make a note of it and make sure that I pronounce it properly. Thank you. And I, I appreciate you joining us and chiming in in the chat room. Uh, Parik Sean. Um, Visual Studio Code itself is worth a lot of mo money. It's such a great editor. Agreed. Uh, uh, Mr. Demon Wolf. Oh, thank you. All right. We got it right. We got the name right. All right. Um, uh, my gosh. Make sure that I'm looking at... Get the, all right, got to have all the sound set up right here. Um, I, I, we need some documentation at some point here. Non-Windows environments, we want to start using that PowerShell script we worked on with Tyler. I think that's in a, in a great place right now. But this is the thing that I want to spend some time on right now. For some reason, calls to the logger are not writing to the log file. I'm going to mark this as a bug. I'm not going to mark it as help wanted because, darn it, I'm working on it myself right now. So when I call logger something, the log entry I expect to be written to the log file wasn't written. And that that makes me feel bad. Um, so let's do this. Let's open up Visual Studio 2019 because I like Visual Studio 2019. Such a groovy song. It is. Oh, you know what? I mentioned this yesterday. While that's loading up, um, I'm, I'm going to make sure. I want to talk about emotes for a second. And here's an emote. Right? This is one of those cool things that we get as part of being a partner. Come on, stick in there. Get in there. Is that gonna Is that going to stand up? I had it standing up a day or two ago. Nope, can't say it that way. Got to do it the other way. There we go. So, emotes like this, right, you get as a subscriber to the channel. And I've had some folks suggest, hey, there'd be some cool emotes that we need to talk about that might be fun. I get lots more emotes now. I think I've got 13 that have been granted to me at this point. So, I was asking, what would be some cool emotes? And I, I don't want a little potato cat here like, uh, like Ms. Fierce Kittens. So, some ideas that were floated... Um, let me see if I can hide a little bit more of this. So some of the ideas that have been floated are, I need an and then emote. You, I can't sit here. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. Without giving you the ability to say and then as well. Lycan, thanks so much for, re for that resub. 
and we'll make a donation to Black Girls Code. Um, everybody needs a hype emote. I have a feeling it'd be really cool to do a hype emote with the, with the .NET bot holding a sign that says hype. Everybody's got some sort of a heart emote. I think I need a mechanical heart. I'm thinking a heart with a clock on it like the Tin Man. That might be cool. Rainbow Beard is kind of a must-have. Broken Keyboard, somebody suggested. I'm not sold on that one. Stream Deck's a big deal. Goofy Headphones. Cartooned C-Sharp. That's definitely something. Um, and then Octocat, the GitHub logo that you see. It's going to pop up over there in the bottom right in just a minute here. Hassam Call, 2009. Uh, just finished wa finished watching the 8-hour ASP.NET Core workshop. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Learned so much. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you for joining us, Assam. I, I appreciate you stopping by. W welcome. Um, we're planning another one of those workshops. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be more. It's going to be ASP.NET Core 2.2. It's going to be just as interactive as you probably heard with us talking to folks in the chat room and answering questions and other fun things like sound effects and and throw me a freaking bone here and even a little dr evil hanging out there um so keep an ear open you'll when when we're ready to do that we'll make an announcement and a little bit later today we're gonna we're gonna do a little dev intersection discussion workshopping with some of the folks from the orlando event this june it'll be hosted here and you'll be able to find it over on the dev intersection channel thanks for, so much for stopping by us um Fritz face card. What's the Fritz face card, Hugo? Um, do we need a sad Fritz face like that, Mr. Demon Wolf? How many emotes do I need? Lots. The answer for emotes is always more. Lots more. Wait, wait. How many emotes do you need? More. Okay. Uh, bring it on. Yeah, I agree. So... Um, I think the Octocat would be fun to have as an emote, but I feel like I'd be stealing it from GitHub. So maybe we do something with the Octocat to make it uniquely Fritz. Maybe it's an Octocat with a rainbow beard or something. So, um, but I'm, I'm, I've reviewed a bunch of different, um, artists. I've got a couple folks that have volunteered to build some of these for me. Um, but I've got a lot more space than that. So we're going to work on that. Clippy. <gasps> Clippy. That'd be fun. Okay. All right. I, I like me some Clippy. That'd be cool. Um, Fritz face card, my square card with me drawn on it. Well, we already have that, right? You can already do this in the chat room and get me popping up. Now it's really small, but it's me. So yeah, Clark IO, I can't wait till till these land. But it's gonna it's gonna take me a little bit to get them built. Love that check mark. I do too. It's so pretty. So um all right so we're back in here's the Visual Studio Stream Deck Toolkit project. And I want to take a look at how and why that logger isn't behaving. And now I'm, I'm going to kick myself. Because the debugger in Visual Studio 2019 wasn't behaving the same way it does, the, the polite way that it does in 2017. Let's take a look and see if it's going to throw those errors for me that it was before. And then... We wait for it to build. Why is it taking so long? Do the thing. Yeah, look at this. It's not properly releasing the files. It didn't... Even though the project... Right? Has in here... There it is. Post build event is to execute... Project directory, scripts, registration, register, plugin, and start Stream Deck. It's not actually doing it. Do the thing emote. <gasps> Works on my machine. Ooh. 
do the thing works on my machine. Yes. Works on my machine might be a little bit trickier to do. Hmm. Okay. Nice cap. Oh, yeah. You like the Overwatch cap? I've got different hats for later today. So. See that, kittens? I got the... She's invading. But for some reason, it didn't execute these scripts. Now, the question that I'm going to have is, did it just not find them? Right? Because this script should kill the Stream Deck application, and it didn't. So is it just not finding it? Right? Um, the Prophet Rebecca Black. Mm, I don't know if I'd call her that. Different hat for each time of the day. Wave hack? Hats are my thing. I love hats. I try and wear a different hat for every stream. I don't have... I, I've got a lot of hats. But we're, we're in repeat mode. And uh, we're growing the collection a bit. But, oh yeah. We're definitely trying to have more. There you go. Used to wear hats back in high school. Nowadays, not so much anymore. I, I did. Janescu's right. I had for Connect, so I hosted Microsoft Connect. And for each segment, I had a different hat. <laughs> Hot diggity dog is here. I wore the fusion hat yesterday. There's the fusion hat. There's our Philadelphia fusion. I had this on yesterday. I don't want to double up. But yes, we had that yesterday. Good to see you, hot diggity dog. Your hair is too fabulous to hide it behind a hat. Um, rumor has it I have more hats than I have followers. No. I don't have that many hats. <laughs> uh, Luckier Sage, what is this project supposed to do? Okay, let me recap. Um, this is this is a series of this is two projects um, a sample plugin and then a .NET standard library that provides a wrapper around the functionality to build plugins for the Elgato Stream Deck right this is what the device looks like right here in front of me let me pop this out of the stand and I'll show you So let's let's do this, and I will come back to the tight shot. So here it is, right? There's, right? You can see it's the same thing as what's on the screen. It's a little bit fuzzy because of my camera, and it's got a little bit of reflection there. But you can see it's the same thing that's on the screen. Now, that means I can program this to do all kinds of different things, and it matches what's on screen there. And... Besides just being able to change scenes in OBS or play some funny sound effects, I can also send text, I can open websites, I can run applications, all kinds of neat things. Send chat mess messages automatically to Twitch. But I want to do other cool things. I want to be able to build and do neat things to interact from my Stream Deck, not just to show an image, but also to refresh and get a little bit of information. So... I've got this idea for let's have a little bit of a developer dashboard on there so I can see and do different things with my development tools. Press button, launch nuke. Not quite. That. Wait, master. It might be dangerous. Might be a little dangerous there, Wavehack. A little. So there's other things, though, where maybe I want to control my, my Philips Hue. And um, Carrie, you'll see her, she's coding Bandit on GitHub. She's actually built a plugin that does that. And if you, if you jump into our Discord, the, she has a video that she shared where she's doing that. She's got buttons on her stream deck that change the lights in the room to whatever color it is that she's chosen. Neat. Simple idea. But the configuration and ability to do that from the stream deck makes it makes it so easy to do without having to fiddle with a phone and find, find the appropriate switches and levers. Set it all, wire it up to a button, and when you're hosting a stream, or maybe you want to have, you wanna have uh, uh, something for guests at a party to be able to control, you just set the stream deck out and you have red and blue and whatever colors 
cop mode, right, Bl right, Clark IO? And you can press that and it'll do whatever you'd like with the Philips Hue lights. Easy ideas. So that's the kind of thing that we're building. And our sample plugin here is our, this is our canonical plugin that we want to make sure this works by default before we start enabling other plugins. So this is a normal C sharp project file here. And it has these targets that are supposed to launch the various scripts after the build appropriately. Mike Jolly, oh my gosh, gifting five subs to friends in the channel. Thank you so much. We're going to make donations to Black Girls Code for that, um, as we do with all of our subs and all of our cheers here. But Coded Beard, Crazy Spaniard, Nameless770, Andy Weiss, and Bo Simonson, congratulations. The five of you have all gotten subscriptions thanks to Mike Jolly. Thank you very, very much. That was the gift sub button on your stream deck. Terrific. Um, that is so phenomenal. Hey, there's Gary. Thank you so much, Mike Jolly. And for those of you that just won that sub, you get to use the .NET bot emote everywhere on Twitch that accepts fine emotes. And uh, yeah, there you go. The five, that's a cool emote, the five sub emote, like Luckier Sage. Harris 2, half sub, nice. Um, yeah, very cool. Thank you so much. You've already got MQTT control of lighting in your living room where your computer desk is. You'll buy a stream deck now. Okay. And it, it's very extensible. Not just right lights or setting things, but running apps, run scripts. Things that you want to automate, you can do from the stream deck. And that's what's so great for a streamer is not only can I automate, but I also get rich feedback on the device. So I'm, I'll do one more thing that I'll show off here on my mini stream deck. I have this here and it doesn't it, it doesn't show but that's the number of viewers show up there this is the CPU utilization percentage and it refreshes every second I can launch and run Spotify over here listen to my favorite music and I've got some visual studio shortcuts over here that I've been building out so simple easy ways to interact and and have great automation from the device not just for streaming anymore. Completely agreed, Hugo. And the folks at Elgato really appreciate our interactions building and supporting the device. And that's why we we gave out a couple stream decks here as well. Um, let me... Uh, what did Robert Table say? You can run scripts. You can even launch and destroy infrastructure in the cloud. Yes, Robert Tables did that over there on his stream. For stream deck productivity. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carrie. Yes, Lots of Stream Deck productivity. Um, and we're going to do some work in that connection manager here to see what's going on. I don't want to put that cheer right in here. Let me close these down. Um, I'm going to go up to our sample plugin. I'll put that right at the top of program. Oh my gosh, dev lead with the resub. I tuned the, the dickens out of that resub. Uh... Thank you so much. And we will, of course, make another donation to Black Girls Code. That's six months, Devly. That's going to put you into the... It's the blue mug now. Yeah. Um, I, I've got to put the cheer snippet back into Visual Studio 2019. It is... Where, did, where is that on disk? I, I need to reinstall that. I forget where I put it. Um... Where did I put it? C dev um, cheer graffiti. There it is. Cheer snippet. Now it won't let me just double click and install that. Where's the snippet manager? There it is. Right, my code snippets. Yes, please. Add one. Right? Uh, no, don't do that. Bad idea. Um, Dev Lead, thanks so much for that. Sharp bot. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Um, and I will make a donation to Black Girls Code. So I started this project one evening to mine the, um, it already contains cheer snippet snippet. Then why doesn't it work? Right? 
So I should be able to go right. There it is. Ah, oh, much better. Dev lead. And then um, today is the 15th February 2019. Fantastic. Thanks so much for that. Not in a comment. Ah, that's what. Um, maybe Elgato would offer some discount codes for a stream deck. Um, so they don't sell directly from their website. Um, so that's, that's the one gap that we have there. But occasionally the folks at Amazon do have sales on it. You can find and capitalize on that. Chris Jeffries, thanks so much for the follow. That puts us uh, 5368, I think. That'll pop up. Um, when we get to 7,000, if we get to 7,000 before May 1st, I'll dye my beard rainbow for Microsoft Build Conference. And we're going to be doing a lot of streaming there. Oh, a lot of streaming there. Um, so this isn't behaving well, and I think it's not finding my script properly. Right? When I look at that project file, right, it's trying to go to project directory, scripts, registration, register plugin, and start stream deck. Um, just glad to see programming on here still. Took a while. Oh, thank you, Chris Jeffries. Um, I'm here four days a week. We've got a bunch of other friends that are also live coding. And if you look below me, there's a team you'll see there, the live coding, the live coders team. Um, click through to there. There's about 10 of us right now, and I'm going to add about five more um, over the weekend. Check them out. You'll always find folks that are programming, and I want to build that out. I think, I think, and, and let me know if you agree with me. Um, coding, teaching folks that, that this is something that you can learn and do is important as we look at the uh, shortage of software developers we have in our community today. So, thanks so much for stopping by, Chris. I appreciate the follow. Um, just bought the Elgato green screen. Big difference uh, versus an Intel camp. Yes. The, the green screen behind you makes a world of difference. Makes everything look much, much more professional. It really does. Whether it's Elgato's or it's somebody else's, really nice to have that there. Um, a few other streamers who code on the awesome developer streams. Yeah, yeah. That's a great link to go through. I got to figure out why this isn't launching. It, this feels weird. So let me look at... Let me go back to the project. Um, come on. There it is. So this is the action... Nope, that's not where I wanted to be. Um, this is not there. It's Stream Deck first. Because this is my project. Source, sample, plugin. So when this builds, it should be going project directory, up one, up another one, into scripts, registration, register plugin, and start stream deck. It should find that, but it's not. Um, if I rebuild, right, so there's the build. Let's see if it actually triggers it or if it throws an error that says, oh, I couldn't find it. No. So these are my local files. This is it trying to copy, actually. Look at that. This is the post-build process. So the post-build is actually trying to copy over to the destination folder. No, no. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Bin debug netcore app 2.1 Win64 Stream Deck. That's my local folder. Something's holding on to that. All right, let's do this. I'm going to kill the Stream Deck app by hand, even though it's not been killed. Right? That's on, on post-build. It should... Right, the register plugin and start stream deck. Let me show you what that script looks like. Actually, it should. Um, you know what? I'm going to add that scripts folder as a solution item here so that we can see it. Existing items. 
So I'm going to step up to here and add everything that's under this. Yeah, add. Now, why didn't it... Okay. What was the next registration? Registration. Uh, I can type. Existing items. So it was up to here. Scripts, registration. Let me add these two. There we go. So now I can click and open them. Um, did that duplicate them? No, it adds them as a reference. Um, <laughs> I think it copied them as well. Um, today when I joined the stream, I didn't see the commercial. That's right. Channel subscribers could cause emotes or something. What's that all about? So Gumshoe, check it out. If you look in the text box that you're typing in, there's the smiley face in the top right corner. Click that. And there's a... Uh, there's a section you should see there that says C-Sharp Fritz, and you'll see the little .NET bot in there. Or you can type into the chat room, C-Sharp. Uh, I don't want to type it there. You can type into the chat room. Let me open another notepad. Ah, come on. Type that, and it'll pop up with the .NET bot. And you'll get all kinds of, uh, yeah, You'll for that, you'll get the, uh, got to head out for a lunch interview with a potential candidate. Thanks for stopping by, Robert Tables. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Can check Git with a Git status. I, no, it didn't copy them, right? It should build now. Actually, it might not build. Okay, so that did build properly. It should have tried to kill the app. Copy over. And if I try and start now, this should start. There you go. Now it's copying over. Hmm. So... This was something that we were seeing that was... I, I think it's an issue in Visual Studio. It's not properly launching the app that we have in our startup configuration. And that makes me feel bad. Um, so I'm going to go back over to Visual Studio 2017. Reopen over here. It's the same project in file format, so it should work in both locations. What's the command line that, that it's running that keeps the console window open? Should be able to get it from Task Manager. It's... It's the same thing that I'm running over here. Watch this. Right? So it's killing the application. So Stream Deck is gone. And then the command line is it's starting the command shell and then attaching to it. And build succeeded. Right? It starts, it stops. But Stream Deck is now running. There it is. And now I'm attached. So now I'm attached, and there's the debugger for inside of the sample plugin. So I'm feeling pretty good about that at this point, right? And now it's initializing, and I'm going to go into that location where it puts down my um, my plugin. It's in uh, App Data Roaming Elgato Stream Deck plugins, and there's the sample plugin. This is where it's copied into. So that started, and it's hanging out there there's this sample plugin it's just a counter doesn't do much but here's my new log file and here it is and that sure looks like it's writing things out into it right that's 954 this is from earlier today okay that's fine so now if I if I push the button for that sample plugin, it is counting appropriately. Am I getting any new entries in here? No, I'm not. Should I be? I don't know. Um, so let's stop this. I'm gonna go back into sample plugin, not and yeah, 
we had to do this also. We had to put together a command file to make sure that it executed and actually jumped into debug mode. That's another thing that we're going to need to address. Um, so here's my sample action. Right, and here's the various things that it's overriding. Um, and I'm going to write out into the logger um, this dot manager dot I don't have access to the logger. Hmm. What do you think, chat room? Do we need access to the logger? I think we do in that connection manager. Right, or at least the logger factory. Right, the logger factory is here. Where, where did it put it? Where, where did it go? It's initialized and... Okay, so it does this secondary initialize. Stores it in that logger factory there. Hmm. Right, and the logger factory and the logger are here and they're private and static. I think we should inject the logger directly. I think you're right. I think you're right. If, if we make a property for the action that is a logger, when we register an action, inject the logger for it. That, that feels right, Code Therapist. I, I kind of agree with you there. Um, let me let me add that. Um, yeah, okay. I'm glad I'm glad we agree on this. Good, 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 good. So let's uh, um, Svava. Friday mischief. Yes, lots of Friday mischief. Of course. Um, I'm gonna make this a public. I logger, uh, I'll just call it logger, get set. I don't think I need to put anything around that. And I'm going to, I'm going to log, I'm going to log uh, Svava's cheer over here in the connection manager during the registration process. So where is it? We have our new register action method. I don't see it. Where did you go? There. Um, so this calls register action internal and inside of here, I will add Now that's not right. Where's my snippet manager? No, that's not it. Snippet manager. I thought we already had this in here. Not basic. My code snippets. No, it's not in there. Feels bad, man. Yes. Do it. Put it in there. Make it so. There we go. We had 100 from Svava. There we go. 15.2. Thanks so much, Svava. And, uh... We'll make a donation to Black Girls Code. And remember, whoever is at the top of the of the list of cheers, there at the top of the chat at the end of the month, will get to join me and we'll do a stream together, pair programming. Um, Auth Zero Bobby will be joining me at some point here. We need to get back together and plan that out. But we're we're on our way. Just created a button on the stream deck to update my SVN based source for a client project. That's awful. SVN. Ugh. Private set so it can be overwritten. Hugo is suggesting inside of our base action. Well, if we make it private, 
I don't think we want to make it... I don't think we can make it private. Because we need to be able to set it from the connection manager. An internal set feels wrong. Right? If I make this, and that's going to be weird. Right? If that's internal set, then connection manager, right? When we register the action, right? Action.manager is this. Then if we said action.logger equals logger factory, create logger. And if we gave it as a name, the name of the action. Actually, we can give it the UUID. Is there a DI in place? No, there is not. DI might be a little heavy handed for this. Might be a little bit much. So now we've created a logger inside the action that's the same as the UUID. So it'll line up appropriately when it comes out of, um, and I think that's a fine default for right now. Um, but when it comes out in the logs, we'll have our logger loaded up appropriately. So now over here in my sample action, when the key up happens, now I can say logger, uh, not just log. Oh my gosh, Crows, just resub for six months and that's gonna put you into a blue mug. Thanks so much. We'll make a donation to Black Girls Code. Uh, got a scoot. Thanks so much for joining us, Lee. Further down the refactor road where we could do register action, my cool action. Yeah, there might be some stuff there. Okay. Um, I want to be able to, hang on, control dot on this. Get a using on that. Gary just resubbed. Thank you very, very much for that with your Twitch Prime. Of course, if you've got an Amazon Prime subscription, you can turn that into Twitch Prime free, and you can use that anywhere you'd like on Twitch to set up, uh, set up a subscription and get rid of the ads. And if you choose to bring that to my channel, um, I'll make a donation to Black Girls Code, and you get to use the .NET bot. So that's all very cool. Now, why do I, I shouldn't have to use Serilog Core, but it's telling me I need to. I don't want to. Now I can say, all right, log information, button pressed, and then I could put the, right, or not even log information. This is like log trace if I really needed to log all that stuff. And then I can include button pressed, and then I can actually, right, I could put the args here. Right, so that whatever's inside the args comes out, which is a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm not sure we're going to get everything out of that, but let's see what happens. Actually, resubbed on the 8th, but the message on the top of the bar wouldn't let up until I shared. Ah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so now I should get a little bit additional log information, and what I'm trying to figure out is... Is it going to appropriately log into my log file? Right, I just, I wanna make sure that we get content being written in there. So right now my log file is zero. It's gonna knock down and restart the plugin here. No, look at this. Unable to copy file. The file bin debug netcore app stream deck DLL. This is in my bin folder. Why is it using that? Your son and I are painting, your son and you, Perry says, painting the living room. Watching the stream from your phone, casting to a 65 inch TV. That's a big TV. Hello, I'm on a big TV. Too much? Too much? Maybe? This reminds me of my life. Hey, one and all. Why? Oh, there's a lot of why. 
Right? That's what so half of software development is. Is Why is that doing that? I didn't tell it to do that. It's doing a thing. Did I mean it to do that thing? Go fix the thing. That's a big C-shop fritz. <laughs> um, why? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Perry. Um, why is it using those files right inside my folder? Let me open another folder here. Let's go look at this. Something doesn't feel quite right. Um, I'm down in source, sample plugin. Colon D. 342. Why 342? Thanks so much, Carrie. Ah, look at that. It ends with, yeah. How did that ever work? I completely agree. How did that ever work? Oh my gosh. Evening Even here watching on iPad while preparing dinner. Just got a couple of inches, Jeff, here. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to mark Carrie's cheer here. Right. Uh, 15, 2. And we'll... Uh, there we go. Thank you so much for those kind cheers. Yes, we will make all kinds of donations to Black Girls Code. Ends in 42, takes top spot. <laughs> yes, yes it does. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> that is very kind. Yes, and, and we will continue to support Black Girls Code. Um, oh, she did have 342. You're right. Thank you. We need the bot to automate that. I am using day, month, year, just because it's a little bit clearer when we parse it. So, um, 442 for the day. Yeah, yeah, look at that. All right. Um, so why is this? It's like there's... I know our friend Stelzi was working on creating a junction here between these. Um, but it's... Right, how would I know if I'm on a junction here? Read only. Uh, right, if I was on a junction, I would be able to see it here. Working with Vue.js front end and .NET web API back end currently. Oh, that's cool, okay. Um, yeah, I'm confused used here. Can I delete this? No, I'm going to need to kill. Let's kill the stream deck. Go away. Shoo. Okay. Let's open Task Mangler. Task Mangler. It's a thing. Um, and this is called Sample Plugin. Lots of Skypes. Too many Skypes. But Sample Plugin isn't here. That's good. It, it properly shut down. All right. I'm feeling good about that. Um, so now if I click this and try and delete. Okay, it does delete. Okay. But why would it try and go across like that? Okay, so if I run this now it should see the files aren't there and stop it. So there's my debug net core app folder. Okay. Stream deck toolkit. Oh, is it still attached to? No. Because the debugger? Mm. Okay, so. How did it write a log file here? That just happened, 11.21, 11.21. That's my local time. Um, but 
but it does have its own PDB in the deployed folder. But it, it's clearly writing it out as it's happening, right? And I'm, I'm pressing the button now and it should be adding entries to that file. And it even opened Bing here for me when it was supposed to. Ooh, stocks are up, nice. Um, so if I open this now, I should start to see, there, button pressed. Okay because it's on the verbose. All right. So, good. It is logging properly. If I stop this, but it's logging here. It shouldn't be working here. It should be working over here. And it's com C sharp Fritz sample plugin SD plugin. This is where it should be. Right, the manifest says run sample plugin CMD. That's local. I did an F5 to start it, yes. It doesn't have any log content here. Something's not right. You know, it's, um, it didn't, I didn't create the junction. <sighs> so how is it? running it from here and not there. It's not supposed to do that. Because the post build actually, actually starts the process which starts the process. Might not be my working folder though. I might be able to buy that. So let me kill the stream deck. Wait for that to close. I like Notepad. That's why there's lots of them open. All right. <clears throat> Good, it's closed. It's not over here. So now I'm going to delete the log folder over here. And I'm going to start it by hand here. Now, where's it writing the log to? Is it gonna be here or is it gonna be here? This is the location, the shared location on disk. This is the location that I'm building in. I'll go you one further. We didn't see the debugger show up which is okay because we didn't, it's not activated. The button's not working at all. I'm getting the error message pop up on it. But if the command file is being called from manifest JSON to launch the application, right, it should be calling sample plugin break. The post build action actually starts the process, right? But the process shouldn't be look, looking in this folder. When you look at the post build that starts the process, when we debug, command start title and it goes down into, you know, from wherever. Um, but it should have launched it's PWB is the project PWD present working directory nah, I 
don't... Uh, yeah, it probably is. It probably is. Hmm... Okay, I might be able to buy that. But right now it's crashing and not even starting anything, even though I have the break command in there, which should start, right? It should start the debugger. Now the debugger is trying to attach. It doesn't have any other information to go with it, so it's not going to work. But that isn't working at all. It's not counting. It's not doing anything. So something happened when I restarted the stream deck that it's not launching and handling this properly. So I just killed it. Let's restart it. And it it's supposed to call sample plugin command to launch. And it should attach the debugger. And it's not. So this doesn't know what to do. Yeah. All right, what the heck is going on here? Right, because that should launch over here. If I try editing manifest JSON, instead of making it call sample plugin command, if I have it call the exe directly, right, we try this again. Come on, go away. There. I've got a log, and there it is. And it's not telling me what value cannot be null. Parameter name key, what key? That bothers me. I need to figure out what that is, and I'm going to save this off to the side. But this tells me that that command file, you're right, the present working directory isn't the correct folder when that command file is being executed. That command file's present working directory needs to be this folder. So maybe if you want script directory in a PowerShell script, use PS script root, split path, my invocation, command path, parent. So the post build action might need a push D. The key passed to the dictionary is null. Right. Um, I need to walk back and see what that state is. So... Let me get to that in a second. I want to make sure that this little command file that we wrote to help with is not using, is using the appropriate folder here. And the folder that it needs to be in is um, app data, el gato. Um, Right, Stream Deck plugins and then my UUID on the end. Like that. So if I go down into there and call this, that should work. And put me in the correct folder for actually doing the interactions here. Right? What do you think, chat room? That way it kills, releases, builds, and deploys. That should work, Code Hugo says. Okay, let's give this a shot. Rebuild all succeeded. Now if I start, so there you saw it kill the stream deck. It's relaunching the stream deck. I'm attached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here I am in the plugins folder, 1131. That's the correct time. 1131. 11.31. Okay. So I've got the right time. We figured out 
the, that it's launching and running from the correct folder, and now we're we're pushing down and attaching the debugger appropriately from the right folder. Okay, that's a start. Um, and I love that now because now we can debug, right? So I think we can put that one. We can put that issue to bed. It is logging properly. It's We were not seeing it log to the correct file because it was logging into a different folder that we weren't actually monitoring. Um, I can try deleting the bin directory to be certain. Sure, let's do that while I'm here. So if I go up, I'll delete the debug folder. Oh. Yeah, that worked. Okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now, um, where is this that it's finding the wrong thing? In run connection manager line 50, 155. So let me go over to connection manager. Uh, it's going to be down in here. If action manager does not contain key message dot action. Okay. So it's telling me contains key find entry. It's telling me value cannot be null on that. So what is the message action that's being passed in that is null? Right? Um, got to run. Thanks so much for stopping by, Crazy Spaniard. Or what's the message? So let's let's log that information. Um, <laughs> um, attempting to find action. Um, on message, and then. JSON string. That's going to be ugly, but it's information. Let's see what it pops out. So now I should be able to just hit restart here and it just goes and zips through and runs. Look at that. Bing, ba bing, bing. Stops. Stream Deck restarts. There it is. And I'm attached now. Nice. I'm feeling good about that. That's really good. All right, I'm going to stop those. And it's not hanging as well, right? There's another good thing. Um, all right, so it's running. If I come back over here and we take a look at the log, let's open that up. Attempting to find action and there it's empty on message. And this is just the device did connect event. Aha. There is no action to detect here. It's just the device is connected. We're now active in using this. So that's okay. We, of course, it's not going to have a message about that. Um, this is right. This is the application telling the plugin there is a piece of hardware there that you're working with. So we know what that is, right? We're we're okay that. Right, that the event is device did connect. So let's actually trap. Let's say if message dot event does not equal, um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna end up putting together a bunch of these that we're gonna need to escape. Um, that makes the dev flow a lot easier. Pit of success. Yes. Why not put a breakpoint on line 154 and just debug instead of logging it? Um, yeah, I could have done that also. Sure. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I'll end up getting rid of this now. And um, I have a feeling there's like a white list of events now that we're going to end up putting pushing through to actions, right? What... Um, 
because the events that we could be receiving, where is it? Right, device did connect, device did disconnect. Because those don't have action names associated with them. Right, I think, I think these four don't have action names associated. Let's put them into an array. Right? Somewhere up here. Actually, over here, we, we have not actions, events. So that's the complete event dictionary. So let's create an array. Private, static, not static, static, read only, string, um, action, events, ignore. And then I'm just gonna put these down in it. This song today is so groovy. I'm really enjoying it. I hope you are too, chat room. There we go. So now I can say back in the connection manager, if actions, action, events, ignore, uh, right? Why don't I have contains? If it does not contain message.event, then we'll proceed. What do you think? Which one is it? This is called Sienna. Um... I like to think that logging with the proper flag set prevents someone else from having to attach a debugger to figure stuff out. Yes. Yep. So now this should actually drop out of there and we should not hit that error. Here we go. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. There's my logger. Debugger launch. Good, I'm attached. And... If we go over to my log. Um, 11.39, I'm getting value null on 161. There. Um, hmm. Oh my gosh, Pac-Man Jr. 11 months. I'm waiting for it to read it. It didn't read it. 11 short months. Amazing progress on the stream. Thanks so much, Pac-Man Jr. I appreciate you joining us. Um, and we'll make a donation to Black Girls Code this month. Um, for all of our donations this quarter. Make sure I say that right. Um, so let's see here. It, it Of course... It's trying to find the action there and it's not going to find it. So I, f I actually feel like, I feel like we need to put this up higher. So we ignore all of the, act, the right? If it doesn't contain that, for right now, continue. We may want to do something in the future, notify something else about it. Um, yeah, so that'll loop and that should take care of that issue. <sighs> How we doing here? About an hour and a half. And well, we'll have our little virtual conference this afternoon that we're going to do. I'm really looking forward to that because... I always learn something new when I talk to my friend Richard Campbell. Okay, that looks like, so 1141. 
Hmm. Value cannot be null on 158. You're kidding me, right? Here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have that backwards. If it does contain the ignore event, continue. Now it should go through. Uh, did you tell already about the Visual Studio 2019 launch day? Yes. Good point there, Code Therapist. Um, Visual Studio 2019. We have a launch date. It's going to be April 2nd. And we're going to have a keynote from Scott Hanselman. Great demos. He's going to introduce you to some of the folks who are responsible for Visual Studio. And uh, there's going to be a workshop, live interactive sessions on the Visual Studio channel. There we go. Plug-in started. And if I press the button, I should get some of those events logged. There they are. Fantastic. Um, and uh, that afternoon, with all that interactive sessions live on Twitch from the Visual Studio channel, who do you think is going to be running that? Totes my goats. It's going to be yours truly. Because we can rebuild it. We can make it stronger. We can make Visual Studio better. And we'll have a Visual Studio 2019. We do a local user group event. That's awesome, Code Therapist. I look forward to, to being able to work with and, and communicate with you and your folks there at the user group event while we're doing the launch. That's going to be terrific. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, hello, is GoTo frowned upon asks unsavable? Almost used it for a university assignment. Um, go to is is not something that you'll see folks use in object oriented programming, like C sharp. Um, you can use it in Visual Basic, but it is typically frowned upon because it's easier to call a named method instead of saying go to a certain line. Use an if block or or a for or a while. Use some sort of block control like that to skip those lines that you want to skip if you need to in the same method or call that other method directly. It's a little bit of object oriented programming um, that that really, that, that type of structure in object oriented programming, you see this in Java C Sharp, VB people frown upon using GoTo. F Sharp folks will, will tell you not to use GoTo as well um, so let me, all right, so I think, I think we've actually crossed a couple of big features here, a, a couple of issues, and we've got these working much better now. Um, I'm going to jump back into PowerShell. I want to commit these changes. The other thing that I'm seeing that I'm really happy about is um, in Task Manager here, that sample plugin, it's not hanging out here as a separate process. And if I go up to the Stream Deck up here, when I look at look look at all these things that it's running, there's sample plugin right there. When I kill the stream deck, it will appropriately right. I got a last second break here that I can do, but it appropriately drops out, and this all goes away, and I don't have an orphan process hanging out here for that sample plugin we're appropriately releasing all of our resources. So I think where I had identified a, um, a possible memory leak before, I think that's gone. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about seeing that. So, yes, I'm, I'm broadcasting. What's up? And there goes one of these C-sharp Fritz miners. My, my daughter's. Um, all right, I'm going to commit these changes. Uh, stream deck first, right? And uh, let me get status, see what all we got there. I'm good with that. I think I'm real good with all that. Make sure everything's saved. And we addressed a couple things in here. The issue with the logger, not logging, that's 114. And I think we also took care of this memory leak, and that's 73. Addressed logger and memory leak issues. 
73 and 114. I'll sign my changes. Push those up. That goes into my private repository. And then I should be able to put together a pull request. There it is. Merge this in. Why isn't it? Now I feel bad. Um, addressed. Why isn't it giving me the name of that commit? Holy cranoli. Um, I think we're okay, actually, with a lot of this. Yeah. I'm definitely going to want to rebase this, though. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hey. Hey. There it is. Punch that in, create the pull request. There's now a draft pull request you can pull down and hit there. Um, so this should start building. We should see it, there it goes. I wanna make sure that that builds and then I'll rebase it. So that, because this is all me, I wanna rebase and squash this down to one commit. Um, I worked in the dev branch. I think you're starting to do, you're, you'd start doing a review for a PR. A lot of other local Visual Studio events. Yes, they are uh, rolling out a bunch of them. Dad's on the stream again. Go oh, wait a sec. Check this out. I have... I have a kid's voice sound effect. Um, I'm not going to run that. Dad's on the stream again. <laughs> It's not too bad. Want to buy some Girl Scout co cookies? Girl Scout cookies? Yeah. All right. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, oh, my gosh. Um... Welcome to the club, Gumshoe. Heading to a big box store for sale on silicon dust tunnelers and a stream deck to... Oh, cool. That, best of luck to you, Gumshoe. Um, yeah, it, it's a fantastic device. I can't speak highly enough about it. There we go. Testing the template, but my tests ran. Nice. The template worked. I'm feeling good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pack. Do the pack, do the publish. I am not going to just squash and merge. I'm going to rebase. Due to conflicts, of course. It's due to conflicts. Everything's doing due to conflicts. What time's the next stream? So I'm gonna we're gonna go right in at one o'clock, one o'clock Eastern, um, at the top of the next hour, and we'll start uh, we'll start with Richard and bring in some of those folks. Um, but I'll be back on Sunday by myself. We'll be writing some code together and having a good time, I think. Um, I think this is what we want is just squash and merge. Squash and merge, squash and merge. I don't want to delete my branch. All right. So that feels really good that, that we addressed a couple of those issues. This one here with the log file, I was particularly annoyed with. Hey, that did build properly. It's right there. Oh, it's running again. Whatever. Um, all right. So I'm going to close this one because we've addressed that. And it was... It, the starting location was a little weird. Um, the memory leak here, I'm going to close this as well. because we do now have it closing and releasing properly because of the way that we grab and release of it. Oh, thank you for the kind words, Auth0 Bobby and Carrie. Yeah. So 1 p.m. Eastern, we'll, we'll kick off with, with Richard and then Steve Smith will join us. Um, there, That's over, like I said, on the Dev Intersection channel. Let me throw a shout out there so you can click throw a follow over there for the dev intersection folks um and i'll be co-hosting for a bit of the afternoon and and there there probably won't be a potato cat over there with me okay um 
yeah, I know. Fierce Kittens might be disappointed that I won't bring the potato cat, but there's a thing. All right. Fantastic streams. Oh, thank you, Janescu. So I, I'm feeling really good that we got we got a bug fixed. You like the potato cat? I don't know. I don't know. I've got some of her other stickers here, and it's like, well, I don't know. There's also the, the angry penguin, right? I've got the angry, angry penguin. Um, with a top hat. That's a very angry. Grilled cheese. We should put some grilled cheese in here too for lunch. Some grilled cheese. No. Um, it's like, it's like Fierce Kittens is looking over my shoulder here. Like, what are you doing, Fritz? What's your problem? Right? I'm, I'm expecting it to just start saying, And you blow it! No, I didn't blow it. It's okay. Potato Cat, I didn't know you sounded like Bobby De Niro. Um, you'd put that potato cat on your car. <laughs> no potato cat. Then I've got to do Quiltonis. No. Um, all right. So I'm feeling really good about those couple of items. Um, we've got some ideas for Roslyn analyzers. Integration test that verifies the template. This works now. This is built. Let's close this out. Because we knew we now have this as part of our um, DevOps processes. Right? It actually installs and builds builds a, a the sample plugin directly. Um, something like that. We need some more default we need default images for the default plugin imagery coming out of the template. Um uh, we need a logging project. Simplify. This is this is a big one that I want to make sure we talk about. I've got a little bit of time here. Maybe I go after this right now. Taco time might join later. Until then, all right. Thanks so much for joining. Um, oh, I love the Pikachu's. Nice. Um, it is too much. It is. There's a lot there. What's going on over? Is there something I need to? No. We're good. We're good. Um, is this something we're going to be able to hammer through real quick? Eh, maybe. Let's see what we can come up with. So the sample plugin right now to start has a ton of code in the program. And it feels bad. I saw the one for the property inspector. I think Carrie got that handle. Yes, I think so too. Um, all of this stuff to set up the default log configuration is, I, I'd love to move that out into a default, a default configure method. Um, wiring up the debugger right here we could move that into another method um and then same thing here the the last minute debug catch we need to get together to prepare the beta merge to be less painful. Oh yeah, the beta merge is going to be... There's going to be a little bit there to make that happen. Love the emotes you folks are sharing. These are really cool ones. Harris watching. Oh, is that... Har um, um, Har What's Harris's name? Full name. He does a great, pod, uh, great YouTube channel. And he talks about helping streamers get better. Um, I'm blanking. And Harris 2 Yikes. Yeah. Those are all Harris's. Yeah, he's got a nice... There we go. You can click it. Harris Heller, that's it. He's got a, he does have a great stream with tips for other streamers. I need to get better about that. Um... So I think we can break out some of these things and we can turn this into into a, a into a default configuration for some of these things. 
and bring in Serilog using that. So that all of our Serilog stuff stays out separate. Mm. Alright, let's let's tinker. Let's push in this direction and see what we come up with. We've got about 20 minutes, half hour. I can go in this direction. Let's see what we come up with. So I'm going to add a new project. And I think this is going to need to be a .NET Core project. I'm going to make it a class library. And I'm going to call this Stream Deck Stream Deck Lib dot config. Let's start there. Um Cool. Why not .NET standard? Good question. Um, because this is configuration that's going to live directly on top of the um, directly on top of the console application that's specific to .NET Core <clears throat> for getting that initial template up and running. For .NET Framework, you might want to do things slightly differently, is what I'm thinking. So I'm going to create this as, uh, boy, how do we do this? Where, where did program go? It's not here. No. There it is. Yeah, this is in sample plugin. Um, I tried to do this a, a couple weeks ago, and I, I got locked up here. So if we take this and if we make that into a default configuration um, if we make it into a default configuration for creating a logger right because get logger factory is calling into this and then we can move the main stuff down. All right. So let's call this um, configuration builder. Make this static. Right. And I'm, I'm taking a lot of inspiration from the ASP net core way they do things. So if we have developers, right, public static Alex J 2019, thanks so much for the follow. Because of Harris, I decided to have to open a stream support Discord. Nice. No, that's that's perfectly fine, Lucky or Sage. I don't mind you sharing that at all. And more streamers, the better. I'm always happy to help other other folks that are in development, that are in technology, that want to start streaming, to help cross promote and and get some uh, get you off the ground okay so I want to I'm not sure what type I'm gonna bring return here but I want to build default configuration and I'm not sure what that means I'm not um, but I'm, we're going to pass in the arguments and the logger factory. Okay, that means I need, if I'm working with logger factory and also Serilog, because I'm going to bring that in as a default here, I need to bring both of those in. So I'm down here. So I need to add those dependencies. Why am I doing it this way? I'm gonna um, extensions not not con oh yeah I need configuration and I also need logging so I'm gonna bring right through to darn it I need all of these and I'm gonna end up dropping some of them in a bit all right so let's edit that. It's not a property group. I thought it was an item group. Right? Item group? Uh, 
Um, yeah, I did it wrong. Is this, is it property group? Did I? Hang on. Item group with package references for sample plugin. Right. Item group package reference. Item group package reference. That should work. Yeah, that's the ticket. Um, configuration, configuration, JSON, Sarah log settings, configuration. Um, command, I don't need the command line utilities. Extensions, logging, Newton soft JSON, Sarah log, Sarah log, Sarah log. I don't need WebSockets either. All right, what don't you like? The element text beneath item group is unrecognized. You make me feel sad. Oh, I lost a package reference. Uh, like that. Reload. Sure. There we go. Now we're up and running. All right. Um, okay, so now I've got the ability to build that default configuration. And I want to return from it a logger factory and some other things, I think. And I feel like that's... Isn't enough to reference Microsoft extensions, logging abstractions. Well, I'm wiring up Serilog by default. So... I want to make sure that I grab all that. So just that right there is going to give me, right, assembly, get, executing, assembly, location. That'll work. Uh, this. There we go, Sarah log. So I need to have a, a top logger and top logger was being used just to log information at this level which I don't need right I don't need the plugin started here why is that not coming through what do you mean you can't create an instance of it's right there Didn't I just bring in the configuration stuff? Didn't we just get that? Microsoft extensions configuration. I bet you these need to be 2.1. Uh, right. Along with that. Yes, thank you. Why am I not? Right, let me rebuild. How are we doing? Pretty good. Nope. Why won't it can't why won't it create the configuration builder? Is my class name Oh. Well played. Alright. Points to electric havoc. Well played. Configuration builder. Yeah, it's in the it's looking in the wrong place here. This should be under Microsoft Extensions configuration. So you know what? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna alias that. Microsoft Extensions Configuration. Let's alias that as config like that. There, now it works. So this there it goes. All right, so now build default configuration. This should work instead of get logger factory, and I don't need this thing. Top logger is kind of lame. I don't need that. 
right? I don't want to... Right? If there's an error, I should actually drop that out into... Um, into a logger somewhere inside of here. So I'm actually going to remove the try catch around this. Right, something inside should handle that on its own. Now I've got the two bits with the debugger. Right, and I can get rid of this too. All right. What do we think? I thought this Friday stream was there's only the dev intersection. Oh, we've got we've got lots. Ms. Ellie face. Look who's here. Ms. Ellie face, team captain of the PH16 crew. Philadelphia's most enjoyable streaming gamers, gaming streamers and uh cooking, of course, cooking with heat on on Monday nights. Let's throw a shout out to Ms. Ellie face. There we go. So good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Because PH16, we can rebuild it. We can make it better. And I'm really enjoying the $6 million man uh, sound effect today. Totes my goats. It's been impressive. Hey, thank you so much for that kind subscription. Give you the cup. Yeah, get that purple cup. Thank you so much with a tier one. And we'll make a donation to Black Girls Code. Thank you very, very much. Um, all right. So I just took a huge chunk of code out of this, so I should be able to take sample plug-in. Um, no, not that one. Bad idea. I want to manage the references. I want to add a reference back now to my config project. We just added here. And uh, I oh, I need to mention... Now you can say you paid $5 for a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm not Starbucks. I'm different. What are you looking at there? I'm looking at you. I'm um, we're working on, I gotta, I gotta make sure I, I call this out, that uh, Eliface and Chef Brent and I were working on a, a concept for a uh, pop culture tech news weekly show here on the channel. Three hosts talking about what's cool, what's new in pop culture, in gaming, in gadgets, in tech um, for about an hour or two. We're, we've got some ideas we're building, we're putting together. It's going to be amazing. Fritz Bucks. It's like coffee for your mind. Dude. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Fly. Not quite. It does sound cool, yeah. Just need a stage to be the old man who yells at a cloud. Well, and then you don't want to get angry at a cloud. So I, I do have the the fart cloud sticker from Eli from from kittens, but it's green. So it just goes right through everything thanks to the power of chroma key. That's not quite the same, but um, it, you know, people people know me. People know Ellie Face, they do. So, and it's going to be it's going to be a great show if we if we get that pulled together correctly. How's it going to be from so many podcasts out there? How's it going to be different from so many podcasts out there? Um, that's just it, right? It's we're going to have fun. We're you've seen our personalities. You know who we are. How's it going to be different? We're, we've learned from, from extensive studying. And I think, Ellie, if, if I, I don't want to step out of line and say um, it's going to be unique. And we've learned from watching much of Marie Kondo's lessons. And there will be a Marie Kondo minute that will make sure... I can step on any line you want. Yeah. There will be... Um, we will make sure that everything we talk about during the show sparks joy. Okay, that's too much. Um, 
But I will tell you that 60% of the time it works every time. And it will. It'll work about 60% of the time. Marie Kondo, yeah. Not Mary. So don't guilt me into cleaning wires from my desk. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen my desk. My desk is bad. I'm uh, not looking for difference so much as streamers that I enjoy separately getting mushed together like peanut butter and chocolate. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So I've pulled this out. So now my logger factory, instead of it right being way up here or something, instead of saying get logger factory to do this, I could say, um, and this isn't perfect yet, configuration builder dot, uh, no, stream deck lib dot config dot configuration builder dot build default configuration. All right, so we've knocked out, what, about 20 lines of code? But there's more. We can kill more. Um, if we pulled this into there, we'd be attaching the debugger inside of this. And if we manage the logger factory outside of... Hmm. <laughs> so does Serlog work now somehow? Yes, it does. Ellie face is salt. No, no. Inconceivable! Not at all. She enhances flavor. Yes. Yes, indeed. Hoping that Fritz and Chef Brent will be reasonable while I literally scream opinions at no one. You can do it! You can do that. Sure. Difference between most podcasts on the same topic is the depth of details and the personalities. Yes. And that's what I think you're going to see. Just check the salt and pepper. Now, wait a second. You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. I don't. I don't think you know. You, you, you know it means what... Something like that. Um, okay. I think if I do that configuration builder, if I pull the debugger into it here... And if I make it, if I have using the configuration builder here, right, if I make that disposable around it, then when it's disposed, I can do the break. What do you think? Black pepper is so good. I like to put black pepper on pizza. Is that a violation? Is that a, is that a problem? What does what does Len Grossman think? Len, what do you think? Black pepper on pizza. I will rain down on a godly firestorm upon you. Okay, Len doesn't like it. No violation cited. Uh, don't go there. It might be, but can't say without trying it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So what if I we take this and turn it into, make this in a disposable object? So let's do this. And if we make this I disposable, right? Implement that interface, right? So it does its thing. Um, let's make the constructor private, right? Just do this. So, um, and uh, Ellie, did you see that the that our fusion not only did not only did gritty the Flyers mascot show up for the fusion entering the arena last night for Overwatch League but uh, Gritty spent the day at the fusion the house that was something that was definitely something I'm going to grab this now and put it here because my thinking is and, and call me out on this if I'm wrong chat room my thinking is We'll do something, instead of use logger factory here, we'll do something like um, use configuration builder and we'll have a logger factory. <gasps> we'll have a logger factory property off of this. I logger factory. Oh my gosh. It's like writing itself. 
get and then uh oops wait a sec we'll make this private to this class so instead of returning the logger factory here we'll return a configuration can fit right we'll return one of ourselves and return this so we need a um, private static configuration builder no I hit the my bad so then I'll say down in here somewhere instance equals new configuration builder logger factory equals bazinga what do you think what do you think chat room I deleted the equals right I thought I made that private set yeah private set new it's right there what what did I do wrong what are the odds I'm wearing an overwatch hat yes season two kickoff last night oh uh is that ponographers it was amazing a gritty emote oh my gosh Ellie I've got my list of emotes that I'm working on here I need a gritty emote it's not static no it's it's not um And I'm going to return instance. Did I? Hang on. Let's open this up here. Did I? Equals new. Get rid of that. There we go. There we go. And then the semi gold goes here. Delete that. That's better. Okay. Okay. So instead, I would, s and then I want to pull this if debug here. If I yank that and put it into here. I need the args to be passed in. So the args are this, which means I need to pass that in to build default configuration so that when I say new configuration builder, I can pass in the arguments. There we go. Good. Oh, this is feeling good. What do you think? Today, your team plays Vancouver, says Pwnographers. Well, uh, Pwn, uh, I think Vancouver plays tomorrow. They play Saturday. And I think they're the last game of the day. Um, I forget who they're playing. I'm looking forward to seeing them because Vancouver Titans, right? That was a Korean team that they just lifted and brought over. That's going to be impressive. They're going to be good. Um, so if I call this now var config equals, oh man, this is going to be so good. Watch this. Watch this. Build default configuration args. So now I can just say, config dot logger factory right boom chat room tell me I'm wrong tell me I'm wrong chat room nothing to see here Michael Jolly nice to see some of my age group down with overwatch league absolutely Oh my gosh, I'm a big fan of Philadelphia Fusion, uh, Pwn, but I've, I've got to warn you about that. And I was so happy to see us beat up on those Aces High London people. That's okay. <laughs> Config Get Connection Manager. Can't do Config Get Connection Manager because I need to do the register actions. But I could do the initialize.
It's not saving me any lines. Let's make sure this still works. Because if it doesn't work, <laughs> it doesn't work. It didn't work. Stream deck lib config could not be found. Well, it didn't build the config. Stream does not contain a definition for select. What? I'm missing a using statement. Missing that. Um. Ooh, boy. I need to turn that around. I don't want to uh, get a waiter, get result, to make it run synchronously. And I want to rename that from class one to configuration builder. Let's do that before I commit. And then I think we're just about ready for me to jump off here and get ready for our event here this afternoon. Come on, no whammies, no whammies, you can do this. Okay, knocked it down, start it up. Here comes the conf, there, yes, yes. All right, so I'm attached to the debugger and I'm over here in the configuration builder, that's okay. So if I go to my, it works, it works. No, we gotta dance to this one. I'm feeling good, I got it working. All right, that's enough of that. Um, that is phenomenal because now, and, and we can look at if there's anything more we want to simplify here, but that is a thing of beauty. As a configuration, as a template to be able to put that together and have just those lines of code. And now watch this. Uh, remove the unnecessary usings. Oh, um, stop running. Now my start is Right, how many lines of code? Right, it's, uh, let's get rid of these extra lines down here. I like a little bit of space for breathing room, but it's 15 to 228, and I've got two lines of comment in there. Uh, well, a comment and a couple spaces. I'm feeling really good about that. What do you think? Shaboom, says Hugo Doll. And how does program CS? I think it looks really good. I do have a FK potato, I present, girl. Look at that. Uh, the potato. Next double refactor. Make it fluent as an extension to configuration manager. Maybe. So with the new features in C Sharp 8, there's no need for a using block anymore. We can take that comment out. Yes, we can. That feels really good. Now... We could have a default register all actions thing here that goes and finds any public available action. Do a little bit of reflection to go find those. Is it correct you don't need to append configure await false after your async calls anymore in .NET Core Web API? That's correct. Everything is running in a console application. You are correct, J. Roseguard. Which one do you mean? Yeah, there's a the using statement in C sharp eight. It isn't a block; it's a single function call that you can put in, um, and it'll automatically deallocate. I'm feeling really good about just this little configuration builder that just isolates away some of this stuff that we don't need. The one thing that I'm I'm concerned about is the if debug is over here instead of over here. Um, so that means that it's not in the debug state of building the project. Right, it's going to be in the debug of building the entire solution. Not for somebody who's outside of us. The syntax sugar is amazing here for this. And I like it. I like it that way, 
And I'm going to keep going that way. I'm going to keep it. I'm surprised that Ellie didn't give me junk for dancing like that. But hey, what do I know? Um, so I should have a new project here that I can just git add uh, source stream deck lib config. There we go. Commit all these things. And this is 34. Um, added a default uh, configuration builder and this is 34. Now we still need to apply this to the template but I'm going to open this pull request and put it out there so that folks can take a look-see. Yeah, I pushed it up. I'd like to create a new pull request, please. Compare from... Why isn't it giving me the option to pull? Yeah, compare across forks. I'm going to pull from th there. Thank you. Oh, damn it. Now I feel bad. Um, all right, let's do this. Git pull upstream dev. Yeah, now I'm, I'm. Uh, let's do that resolution. Yeah, there is new logging part of, as part of the stream deck beta that we're gonna be able to use. Go away, go away. Um, yeah, I know. Gotta wait for all the plugins to start. Gumshoe, back with a stream deck. Congratulations. There's my box. Love these things. Welcome to the team. Might we still want to use our own logging, though, even if it's optional? Yes, but this is a default so that it gives you all those sensible defaults. If you want to set up and use your own, let's add some other configuration items to make it easy to inject whatever it is that you might want to configure. This is strictly a start, right? <clears throat> All right, so this is me flip-flopping flip -flop, flip back and forth between Visual Studio 2017 and 2019. I'm going to keep the 2019 version. And there's another one down here for Stream Deck lib config. I'm going to keep the current that includes that project so that it's in the solution. All right. Um, back over here. Uh, that was the solution file. So let's add that to the commit. Program CS now. Gee, I wonder what could be removed or changed in here. Um, yeah, I am leaving all the cheers and yanking the logger factory. Okay, now they're in there twice. Merged. All right. Um, I'd really like to rebase all that. Right, if I wanted to merge all the way, if I wanted to rebase, I would rebase all the way down. I would go head tilde three. Nope. Rats. What? Um, oh, wait a sec. No changes. Patch already applied. Uh, 
Oh, oh, I didn't do it interactively, so it just did it. Uh, Ferreral, thank you for the follow. We need a plug-in hackathon. That would be really cool. That's a good idea. Um, so I'm going to get push force because I merged all that stuff in. So now this should actually change and be a little bit friendlier. No. Darn it. Git pull upstream dev. No. Now it's giving me the same thing with the merge failure. What the heck? And I bet you it's the same files. Of course. Why isn't it accepting that? I want to... Mm. Right, I want the current change here. Come on. And I want the incoming change on this one. I want the current change on this. Cool. So I should be able to go back over here, add these two. Merged. Okay, I'm gonna leave that open now. Okay. Git log, I'm going to rebase this down into here. So I'm going to do a git rebase i. Git rebase i head tilde 2. And we're going to squash into this. Nope, doesn't like it. And it's those same two files. I'm not changing the message. I'm going to take the current change, save. Uh, okay, I get it. That was program. And then the solution, I'm going to take the incoming. Save, add. Uh, oh, I forgot. Down here, it's the same thing. I need to accept the current. Save. Add. And now I should be able to... I need to mark them as resolved. Source sample plugin program. Source the solution file. Okay. And then git rebase continue. Looks good to me. Git push force. So that goes up to my branch. Now I should be able to come over here and reload this. Have a good one, Rambling Geek. No, still doesn't like it. I'm taking it anyway. Uh, across forks, mine. And it's saying it doesn't like it. All right. Added default configuration builder. I don't like how it keeps... And it's still got that same stupid conflict in there. No matter what I do, it will not clear this out. Mark is resolved. All right, next one, the solution file. 
I want that one. <coughs> Excuse me. Where's the other one? It was only the one. Commit. And I'm not going to be able to rebase and merge. No. That stinks. And I wanted to to build the whole thing here, the whole hootenanny, and see it build. But we're not going to get there. And I need to wrap up and call it a day here so we can get over to the next event. So here's what I'm going to do. This is committed. It's out there. You can check it out. The pull request is available. So you can see it doing its thing here. There we go. Oh, yeah. A lot of Git Gymnastics. And then... Right? And then... Test that template. That should work. We didn't change the template. So we should be good there. But we'll need to add the config bit to our deployment. We're going to need to expand our the, the config package to our deployment capabilities here that looks good restore and it built properly right if we look at what happened during the build process all the way down here one warning is property inspector connected is assigned but its value is not used fantastic it worked we should get a green light here in just a second there it is so I could, uh, yeah, I'm going to merge this. Why not? I'm right here. Fantastic. And just to make sure I clean up my stuff, I will git pull upstream dev, and that should be all synced. And now everything, you stink. And now it works and everything's good locally. Fantastic. All right. So we learned a lot. We did a, a whole bunch of really cool things here today. I am thrilled with the updates that we made, with the progress that we've put into this project. Because we've dramatically simplified what it takes to configure and get started building a plugin. We need to roll those changes out to our template, but it's there. We've got it happening. It's nice and small, and it's going to be great going forward. We found the source of the memory leak. We found why the logger wasn't working. It wasn't properly executing and moving things during the deployment process and executing and starting the project from the folder that the Stream Deck plugin was actually deployed into. Yes, we found out, including you. I got some great help from folks in the chat room. That's why I call this my pair programmers. The, the stream that's coming up next, you'll find on the Dev Intersection channel. There's a link to it right there. So I need to take a quick break, get some things set up, grab a, a bite to eat, and I'll be back in about 20 minutes over on the Dev Intersection channel. In the meantime, I think we're going to raid over to our friend Steve Smith because he's going to be our second guest during the, the virtual Dev Intersection event today. So let me kick off that raid. Say hi to Steve. And uh, let him know that you're looking forward to seeing him as part of virtual Dev Intersection. Um, check out what he's doing with ASP.NET Core, with uh, DevOps. And I will see you in just a little bit. I'll be back here on this channel on Sunday for more live coding. And I think we can break this down a little bit further and start tying down, start improving some of our plugins that we've already started on. So I'm really happy about that. Alrighty. Thanks so much, everybody. Say hi to Steve for me. And uh, we'll see you next time in about 20 minutes if you want to join us. Take care.